Hello, and welcome to Bulldog TV News, an affiliate of the USA News Network. I'm Cameron. And I'm Terrence. Here's what we have for you today. After the election of Donald Trump, President Obama and the current Congress have just over two months to finish their work before a new administration and new Congress convene on Washington, bringing complete Republican control to the nation's capital. Obama will embark on his final scheduled foreign tour Monday, planning to visit Greece, Germany, and Peru to deal with a wide range of American issues abroad and try to calm shocked world leaders about the outcome of the U.S. election. Congress will also return from recess Monday complete, to complete its month-long lame duck session. Among its top priorities will be reaching an agreement on a spending bill to fund the government through September 2017, before the current stopgap deal expires on December 9th. President elect Donald Trump made his first two key personnel appointments on Sunday. One in overture to Republican circles by naming GOP, she renamed Perdus as his White House Chief of St Staff. The other, a shot across the bow, bow of, the, of Washington establishment by tapping news executive Stefan Bannon as chief strategist and senior counsel. The two men had made up the president-elect chief of staff, staff shortlist, and while previous received that job, Bannon's post also is expected to, to significant cult. The media executive with ties to the alternate right and while, and while nationalist movement was given top billing in the press release announcing the appointments, Trump's hire were at the first glance, though they fit a pattern of celebrity businessmen creating a test that allowed his supporters to see what they wanted. A powerful earthquake struck New Zealand's South Island early Monday, killing at least two people, damaging buildings and infrastructure, and prompting warnings to people among the coast to move to higher ground to avoid waves triggered by a small tsunami. The magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck just after midnight in a mostly rural area that's dotted with small towns. Near the epicenter, it opened snaking fissures in roads and triggered landslides. It caused damage in Wellington, the capital, more than 120 miles north. It was also strongly felt to the south in the cities of Christchurch, which was devastating by an earthquake in 2011 that killed 185 people. Even before Donald Trump chooses a Supreme Court nominee, the new president can take steps to make several continuous court cases go away. Legal challenges involving immigration, climate change, cost-free, prospective care, and transgender rights all could be afflicted without any help from Congress. The cases turn on Obama administration policies that rely on the president's pen. Registrations are decisions made by federal agencies. And what one administration can do, the next can undo. It is not uncommon for the court's docket to change when one party replaces the other in the White House. The change in direction is magnified by the high court seat Trump will get to the field after Senate Republicans refuse to consider President Barack Obama's nominee of Judge Merrick Garland. An Ecuadorian prosecutor will question Julian Assange on Monday about allegations of possible sex crimes committed in Sweden six years ago. Mm -hmm. Swedish officials say Assange will be interviewed at the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he has been holed up for more than four years. A Swedish prosecutor and police investigator will be present during the interview. Assange, who hasn't been indicted, denies the sex crime allegations and says he fears being extradited to the U.S. because of his work with WikiLeaks. A worker, I mean... A record-breaking supermoon, the closest full moon to, to Earth since 1948, will shine bright Monday. The exact moment of the full moon will be Monday morning at 8.52 a.m. So be careful if you're looking up during your morning commute. Supermoons occur when the moon moves closer to the Earth than is normal. The NASA says the moon won't travel this near to the Earth again until November, 20th, November 25th, 2034. Skies should be clear across most of the nation Monday's night to Glazer to stare into, the sp <laughs> stare into space. Moviegoers drained by the drama of the presidential election sought refuge at the movies over the weekend, where ticket sales were robust for just about everything. Doctor Strange led the North American box office for the second week with $43 million, which is now nearing $500 million globally. According to studio estimates Sunday, Trolls, the musical animated release with Anna Kendrick and Justin Timberlake, also held well in its second week with $35.1 million, bringing its domestic total to $94 million. Science fiction thriller Arrival, starring Amy Adams, 
scored the weekend's top debut with a better than expected $24 million. Opening in fourth was Almost Christmas, the first holiday themed release to hit theaters. The family gathering comedy starring Danny Glover and Gabrielle and Gabrielle Union debuted uh, with 15.6 million. Some <laughs> Americans Canada or Europe just aren't far far enough away from Donald Trump, so instead they're looking to the cosmos. The National Geographic Channel will debut its new miniseries Mars Monday night, and the channel he has said interest in making the journey to Earth's red counterpart has increased since Election Day. NASA currently has plans of sending a flight to Mars by 2040, if not sooner, and a mini-series <laughs> how the first minute mission could actually take place by two, 2033. NASA hopes sending humans to Mars will eliminate our chance of extinction due to some distant event. The global event starts at 9 o'clock to 8 p.m. Central, or you stream the premiere right now at, net, at nationalgeographic.com. The Kansas City Chiefs stunned the Carolina Panthers 20-17 to yesterday, rallying from a 17-point deficit late in the second quarter. While most of the Chiefs' scoring came off the foot of place kicker Gary Santos. The spark that ignited the comeback was Eric Berry's 42-yard pick six in the fourth quarter to put the Chiefs back within three points of the Panthers. A late fourth quarter strip and recovery gave the Chiefs possession with 20 seconds left in which Santos kicked the tie-breaking field goal with zeros on the clock. Panther quarterback Cam Newton's now infamous touchdown celebration dance move, the dab, made a return to his repertoire yesterday despite proclaiming it dead during the offseason. And I busted a 32-yard touchdown run with nine seconds left in the, to lead the Dallas Cowboys 35-30 to over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Elliott finished the day with an impressive stat line rushing for 140, 14 yards and two scores as well as 95 yards receiving and a touchdown as well. Rookie quarterback Dar Prescott Prescott continued to shock not only Cowboy fans, but football pundits and fantasy followers, passing for 319 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. The game stayed evenly matched throughout, even as Ben Roethlisberger connected on a touchdown pass to Antonio Brown with only 42 seconds left in the game. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones said late Sunday night that even though former starting quarterback Tony Romo will return to uniform next week, he will be serving as Prescott backup. <laughs> Marcus Martina completed 19 of 26 passes good for four big touchdowns as the Titans crushed the Packers 47 to 25. Running back DeMarco Murray not only rushed for 123 yards and a, and a score, but also passed for a 10-yard touchdown in the first quarter. Injuries to cru crucial offensive linemen continue to plague the Vikings, who face their fourth straight loss to Washington, 26-20. Jameis Winston led the Buccaneers with 312 yards, passing in two touchdowns to a 36-10 route of the Bears. The Eagles rallied for 14 big fourth-quarter points to beat the Falcons, 24-15. The Ryan, Math Ryan Matthews rushed for 109 yards and two scores. The Rams beat the Jets 9-6, spoiling Jet QB Bryce Petty's debut with his team. Justin Simmons timed a perfect leap over the Saints line, blocking lead-changing extra point, running it back for a two-point defense converse, conversion, and giving the Broncos a 25-23 win over the Saints. The Texans thrown a late rally attempt by the Jaguars, winning by a score of 24-21. Kiko Alonso took an interception to the house with a minute remaining, helping the Dolphins to beat the Chargers 31-24. Carson Palmer led the way with 375 yards passing and a touchdown as the Cardinals topped the 49ers 23-20. And in the Sunday night feature game, the Seahawks stopped the last second's goal stand by the Patriots to win 31-24. Russell Wilson continued with Doug Baldwin for 59 yards and three touchdowns for the Seahawks. Channing Fry scores 20 points off the bench and to lead the Cavaliers to 100-93 victory over the Hornets. Serge Ibaha and the Magic Edge out of the Thunder, 19-119 to 
117. Despite Russell Westbrook's huge 41 point, 12 rebound, and 16 assists, triple, I mean, triple double. Andrew Wiggins blasts 47 huge points to lead the T Wolves over the Lakers 125 to 99. The Warriors turned down the Suns 133 to 120 with a big push from the splash trio of Steph Curry, Kalei Thompson, and Kevin Durant scoring 30, 30, and 29 points respectively. The Blazers outlast the Nuggets for quarter rally with a 112-205 win. Damian Lillard led the Blazers with 32 points on the night. The Jets rushed through the Kings in a 3-2 shootout winner. The Canucks topped the Stars 5-4 in overtime despite two goals from Patrick Eves. The Wild took down the Senators 2-1 and Matt Dumba's OT goal. Patrick Kane scored a sensational fall-down goal as his Blackhawks handed the, Can the Canadians their second regulation loss, 3-2. Took a Rask stopped 21 stops to boost the Bruins in a 2-0 shootout of the Avalanche. And the Rangers plug up the all Alliers 3-1 on Michael Grabner's two goals. Three stunning upsets will surely send shockwaves through this week college football playoff committee meeting. Number one, Alabama easily handled Mississippi State 51 to 3 to remain the lone undefeated school in the FB to FBS second rate <laughs> loss on the last second field goal to Pitts 43 to 42, while Iowa accomplished the same last second feat with upsetting number three, Michigan 14 to 13. The other remaining undefeated team, Washington, lost to Pac 12 rival. rival USC 26 to 13. Fifth rate Iowa, Idaho State flatter Maryland 62 to 3. Number six, Lew beat Wakes Forest 44 to 12. Se seventh rate um, Washington, they clean it. Iowa's 48 to 3. And a couple of SEC upsets, Ole Miss. Snuck by eighth, by eighth, ranked Texas A.M. eighth and M. twenty nine, twenty nine, twenty nine, twenty nine. Where you at? Twenty nine. Where you at? Oh, <laughs> shut down now. Number nine, Alabama thirteen to seven and tenth, ranked Penn State scored twenty four to fourth quarter points to hold off Indiana's Indiana. 45 to 31. That's, That's all we, all we have, have for, for you today. today. I'm Cameron. And I'm Terrence. Join us again tomorrow for the Daily News. Bulldog TV is an affiliate of the USA News Network. We'll see you next time. Boom.